There's a tremendous amount of anger uh, against Israel. Iranian attack on Israel was a pretty extensive affair. Something crazy just rocked the international stage. Iran fired a massive amount of drones and missiles at Israel, and things might escalate very soon. This act has been met with a swift response from Israel and its allies, and the next few days could determine if we're going to have another major war on our hands. In the midst of this tense situation, a remarkable display of new technology has emerged that helped Israel to successfully decimate Iranian drones with unprecedented precision and efficiency. So what exactly happened? How was this threat dealt with? And what does this mean for the world? Join us as we discuss how the U.S. and U.K. navies just decimated Iran's drones with a new technology. Before we go into details, we need to first explain how serious the situation on the ground is. Israel and Iran have a history of conflict and have been engaged in a long-standing rivalry for many years. This rivalry has escalated into what is often described as a shadow war between two countries. The recent escalation of tensions was caused by Israel's military actions in Gaza. Israel's military operations against militants in Gaza have heightened tensions with Iran, which backs various militant groups in the region. In addition to the conflict in Gaza, Iranian-backed forces in Iraq and Syria have launched attacks targeting U.S. military positions in those countries. This has further exacerbated the situation, leading to increased hostilities between Iran and Israel. Iran's leadership has issued warnings that attacks by its allies will continue as long as Israel's military operations in Gaza persist. This has created a cycle of violence and retaliation between the two countries. The situation took a dramatic turn when Israel escalated its campaign against top Iranian security figures by carrying out an assassination of a senior Iranian general at the country's embassy in Syria. This bold move by Israel, which violated the traditional diplomatic immunity of embassies, further inflamed tensions between the two nations. As a result of these actions, fears of a wider regional conflict have heightened. And so, on the night of April 13th, Iran launched a significant attack on Israel, marking the first direct assault by the Islamic Republic on the Jewish state. The attack involved approximately 300 attack drones and missiles being launched from Iran towards Israel. This aggressive move triggered air raid sirens across Israel, causing widespread concern and prompting the military to take immediate action to intercept the incoming Iranian projectiles. The IDF spokesperson, Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, confirmed the commencement of the attack at 11 p.m., which had been anticipated for several days. When it became apparent that Iran had fired missiles at Israel, there was a swift response from Israeli fighter jets that were deployed to counter Tehran's attacks. The impact of the attacks was felt across various regions of Israel, with sirens first being reported in southern Israel communities around 1.42 a.m. The alert then extended to encompass large areas of the country, causing panic and fear among the population. The sound of loud booms reverberating across the north and the south of Israel, as well as in Jerusalem and numerous towns across the West Bank. Amidst the chaos and turmoil, reports emerged of casualties resulting from the interception of an Iranian ballistic missile over southern Israel. The Megan David Adam Ambulance Service confirmed that their medics were attending to a young girl who had been wounded by shrapnel during the missile interception. The seven-year-old girl, hailing from a Bedouin town near Arad, was swiftly transported to Soraka Hospital in Beersheba, where she was listed in serious condition. This heartbreaking development served as a stark reminder of the human cost of such hostilities and underscored the urgency of the situation at hand. As the events continued to unfold, it became evident that the region was on the brink of a potentially devastating conflict. In response to these developments, leaders from around the world swiftly condemned the attack and called for an immediate cessation of hostilities. The international community expressed deep concern over the escalation of conflict and emphasized the need for dialogue and diplomacy to prevent further deterioration of the situation. Meanwhile, Israeli officials worked tirelessly to assess the full extent of the damage caused caused by the Iranian attack and to formulate an appropriate response. The country remained on high alert as the military continued to monitor the situation and prepare for any potential further aggression. 
According to Iranian state media, an official statement from the elite force revealed the details of the attack. The state-run IRNA news agency quoted an anonymous official who disclosed that ballistic missiles were also part of the assault. Hagari, a spokesperson for Iran, stated that the total number of projectiles launched at Israel exceeded 300. This included 170 drones, 30 cruise missiles, and 120 ballistic missiles. However, he also mentioned that an impressive 99% of these projectiles were intercepted by Israelis' air defenses. During a morning press statement, Hagari emphasized the significance of this strategic achievement. He highlighted the Iranian threat and its confrontation with the aerial and technological superiority of the IDF. He also acknowledged the strong fighting coalition that contributed to intercepting the majority of the threats. It was reported that all 170 drones and 30 cruise missiles were successfully intercepted outside of Israeli airspace by the Israeli Air Force and its allies. None of these managed to breach the country's borders. However, the IDF confirmed that despite their efforts, some of the 120 ballistic missiles did penetrate Israel's defenses and targeted the Nevatim Air Base in southern Israel. The long-range aero-air defense system operated by the IDF played a crucial role in neutralizing the vast majority of the ballistic missiles. This incident underscores the ongoing tension in the region and the complex dynamics at play between Iran and Israel. At Nevatim, slight damage was caused to infrastructure, but the airbase was running as usual, Hagari said. As you can see now, the base is functioning and continues to perform its tasks. In the picture, you can see the runway at Nevatim, he said, showing live footage from the airbase during his press statement Sunday morning. Iran thought it would be able to paralyze the base and thus damage our air capabilities, but it failed. Air Force planes continued to take off and land from the base and leave for offense and defense missions, including the Adir F-35 planes that are now returning from a base defense mission and soon you will see them landing. Three U.S. officials also said the American military shot down Iranian drones headed toward Israel, although the exact number of drones shot down and their specific locations have not been disclosed. Security sources have revealed that U.S. forces operating from undisclosed bases in the region were able to shoot down several Iranian drones in Sweden and Dara provinces in southern Syria near the Jordanian border. Additionally, it has been reported by regional security sources that Jordanian jets also intercepted numerous Iranian Iranian drones flying across northern and central Jordan en route to Israel. This action by Jordan has been seen as a strong display of support for Israel, especially in light of the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. The sources have indicated that the drones were brought down in the air on the Jordanian side of the Jordan Valley and were headed towards Jerusalem. Furthermore, some of the drones were intercepted near the Iraqi-Syrian border, although specific details about these interceptions have not been provided. In the midst of all this, the interception cost of cheap drones is a major concern for many nations, including Ukraine and Israel. These drones pose a significant threat and come at a high price for intercepting. Ukraine is facing relentless air assaults, particularly from Shahed Kamikaze drones, and is seeking support from allies for more Patriot interceptor missiles. In response to this ongoing threat, Ukraine may soon be equipped with a new laser air defense system. This system could provide a more cost-effective solution for intercepting drones in missiles. Also, the UK is also taking steps to address the growing threat of cheap drones. The development of the Dragonfire laser system is being expedited with plans for it to be operational on Royal Navy ships in 2027. This cutting-edge technology is seen as a potential response to the drone threats posed by Russia. In a recent announcement, UK Defense Secretary Grant Shapps hinted at the possibility of providing system prototypes to strengthen Ukraine's defense. This declaration comes at a time of increasing Russian airstrikes in Ukraine. The Dragonfire laser system offers a more affordable alternative to conventional interceptors with the ability to take down drones and missiles at a fraction of the cost. Dragonfire is an incredible new weapon that operates on a line-of-sight basis, meaning it can engage with any visible target. While the exact range of this cutting-edge technology is currently classified, its capabilities are truly impressive. According to a press statement released by the UK Ministry of Defense, Dragonfire harnesses UK technology to deliver a high-power laser over long distances. 
The precision required for this weapon is truly remarkable, as it is equivalent to hitting a one-pound coin from a kilometer away. This level of accuracy showcases the advanced nature of Dragonfire and its potential to revolutionize modern warfare. One of the key advantages of Dragonfire is its ability to engage targets at the speed of light. By utilizing an intense beam of light, this weapon can effectively cut through its target, leading to structural failure or other impactful results if the warhead is targeted. This level of precision and speed sets Dragonfire apart from traditional weapons, making it a formidable addition to the UK's defense capabilities. In January, Dragonfire underwent a successful test at the Ministry of Defense's Hebrides Range in Scotland. This milestone was heralded as a major step toward the deployment of laser-directed energy weapons, LDEWs. The successful test further validated the potential of Dragonfire and demonstrated its readiness for real-world applications. The press release celebrating this achievement highlighted the incredible efficiency of Dragonfire. Firing the weapon for just 10 seconds is equivalent to the cost of using a regular heater for an entire hour. This level of efficiency not only showcases the cost-effectiveness of Dragonfire, but also positions it as a potential substitute for certain functions currently performed by missiles. In fact, operating the laser costs less than 10 pounds for each shot, making it a compelling option for military operations. While the full deployment of the Dragonfire system is scheduled for 2027, shops emphasize the strategic importance of this technology during a visit to the Dragonfire lab. He also acknowledged the current geopolitical situation, particularly in Ukraine, and suggested the potential for an accelerated delivery of prototype units to address the immediate threat. According to Shaps, although the UK's goal is to have the Dragonfire laser system in use by 2027, there are now plans to transfer earlier, potentially less advanced prototypes to Ukraine. The UK Defense Secretary said, let's say that it didn't have to be 100% perfect for Ukrainians, perhaps, to get their hands on it. 2027 is still the date as of this moment, but of course, I'll look to see what we can do to speed it up. DSTL project manager Matt Cork notified reporters that the UK 7th Air Defense Group may receive the Dragonfire laser in September for user experimentation. Truck mounting will enable British Army specialists to evaluate and provide input on the ground-based version's functionality and possible enhancements. The significance of this development cannot be overstated, especially in light of the challenges faced by Ukraine due to a reported shortage of Patriot interceptor missiles. While the exact number and location of Ukraine's Patriot systems may remain undisclosed, it is widely believed that the country is grappling with a severe lack of air defense ammunition and other essential equipment. This has left Ukraine vulnerable to relentless attacks on its energy sector by Russia. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba recently addressed the nation's struggle with munition shortages, revealing that his team had identified over 100 Patriot air defense systems that could potentially be provided by partner countries. Without specifying any particular state, Minister Kuleba emphasized that they had identified at least four European and Asian users of Patriots who were willing to immediately support Ukraine in this critical time. According to officials in Kyiv, a total of 26 Patriot systems would be needed to ensure comprehensive air defense coverage for the entire nation. At present, the primary goal is to acquire seven Patriot systems, which would serve to protect vital locations from potential Russian airstrikes. Despite assurances from EU allies, including Germany, the search for Patriot systems has thus far yielded no concrete results. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section.